When someone asks me to look back at the Wisconsin Badgers during the early 2010s and choose a player that embodies the program the best, there's one player that instantly comes to mind. Jared Aberderis was never supposed to play Division I football, let alone play in the NFL as a drafted player. Coming out of high school, his only offers were from Division II schools, and it looked like his career was over. He was debating about just pursuing a track career. Then, his father decided to make a phone call to the University of Wisconsin football team, and that is when Jared's life would change. Aberderis embodies what the Badgers football program was during the early 2010s. They weren't supposed to be competing at the level they were, but they did through hard work and determination. But who is Jared Aberderis? Jared Ryan Aberderis was born on December 17, 1990, and grew up in the town of Watoma, Wisconsin. Watoma is a town that has about 2,200 people in it and is about an hour and a half north of Madison. Wisconsin's Aberderis is a living legend in his hometown, but wishes he could be treated like a normal person. When Jared was five years old, he told his mother he was going to be a professional football player one day. She told Fox Sports, In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, what percentage of kids from high school even go on to play college football, and from there, what percentage actually go on to play professional football? To me, I thought it would be a stretch. I just looked at him and thought, work hard at it, and you can do it. When he reached Rotoma High School, he hardly resembled a pro prospect, but his head coach, Dennis Moon, remembers him having so many intangibles that he knew Jared was going to be successful in some way. Jared was hard working with his training starting at 7 a.m. before school, and during his senior year, he didn't go out for wrestling because he wanted to use the time to work out more. He worked out so often, Moon finally told him he needed to stop and preserve energy. Aberdera says he learned the value of hard work from his parents. His mom was a waitress at Cristiano's, and his dad was a firefighter and paramedic for the city of Oshkosh, about an hour east of Watoma, near Lake Winnebago. Jared's determination, Jared showed his determination his sophomore year of high school when he suffered a gruesome injury. He was told his football playing career might be over, but Jared would not accept that. His high school athletic trainer at the time described the injury as horrific and it would take most kids over a year to recover from, but for Jared, it took a few months. Aberdera set a goal to return in time for track season in the spring, and through relentless rehab with his athletic trainer and his physical therapist, he achieved that goal. He went on to place fourth at the state championship, in the 110 meter hurdles and fifth in the 300 meter hurdles. During his sophomore year, he was named second team all conference. As a junior, he was named second team all conference at quarterback and first team all conference at defensive back. And as a senior, he was a first team all conference quarterback and defensive back, conference offensive player of the year, and Wisconsin's Football Coach Association's first team all state quarterback. He finished his career with 3,014 passing yards and also competed in track and wrestling. He was a two-time state championship and state record holder in the 110-meter hurdles and a state championship as a senior in the 300-meter hurdles. His track team won the state championship in 2009. He was named Gatorade Track Athlete of the Year and BFS Male National Athlete of the Year as a senior. One of the most heavily told Jared Aberdera's stories comes from his senior year of high school when he led his high school on a magical run to the state championship as the star quarterback. It was during the state semifinals, and Aberderis was getting drilled harder with each successive quarterback run. He would lift himself up, return to the huddle, and continue running the same play over and over. Two wide receivers on each side with a running back to block for him. As the game went on, we were spreading everybody out and saying shotgun to Jared, said Dave Wyack, who was the Watomo's offensive coordinator that season. Basically just to have Jared run right or Jared run left. Whatever side we felt might be most open. He would just truck and run. Why worry about a fumbled handoff or something like that? It was just them blocking for Jared this way or that way, and it was successful. Aberderis would carry the ball 38 times for 264 yards with three touchdowns and a 42-24 win against Baldwin-Woodville, drawing praise from the opposing team's head coach for his incredible toughness. Six days later, Aberderis would lead his high school to a 20-0 win over Bigfoot at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison for the state title. Moon, his former head coach, said there was no denying Aberdeer's athletic ability. Often, he would outrun unblocked linebackers or safeties and turn sure yardage loss into a touchdown. And Moon was convinced his standout player, a first-team All-State quarterback, deserved a shot at college football, though no big-time recruiters ever came to watch his games in a small town. Nobody, he says, ever outworked Aberdeer's. Coming out of high school, Aberdeer's was an unranked recruit who would never have a Division I college coach reach out to him. At the time, Moon's son was working for the Athletic Compliance Office for Central Michigan, so he sent his son Jared's film. 
His son's response was that he was a dime a dozen and that they saw 100 guys like him coming out of high school every year. Moon tried to tell him how Jared lifted their team to higher levels, but nothing would come from it. Moon told Fox Sports, Coaches all want to see what your wingspan, how tall you are, how much do you weigh, how fast do you run, how much do you lift, and then your stats. That was the first thing they looked at, but there are so many intangibles that they don't measure. They don't measure your heart, like you will go to your maximum every single down. That was Jared. During the summer before his freshman year of college, Averdaris instead was preparing to walk on a Wisconsin's track team. He had gone on to win two state titles in the 110 meter hurdles and one state championship in the 300 meter hurdles. But as he worked at his summer job on the farm near his home, he told his dad he truly wanted to play football. His father told Fox Sports he got looks at Division II schools, but for Jared knowing there was another level above him, he didn't want to play at the Division II school. He said, if I'm playing, I'm playing where the best is, and I'm going to be one of those. Scott made several calls to the Wisconsin football office and finally reached former assistant coach Bob Bostad. Scott told him about his son and how he had been overlooked, and if the Badgers would only give him a chance, he would make them proud. Scott was encouraged to send over some game film. One week before fall camp, Bostad rang up the Aberdeers family. After watching his film, Wisconsin was prepared to offer Aberdeers a preferred walk-on spot. It would prove to be one of the best decisions the Badgers have ever made in quite some time. Aberdeer started his Wisconsin career at wide receiver, but served as a scout team spread quarterback. He would redshirt during the 2009 season, but started earning a reputation when some of his teammates were hurt during spring practice in 2010, quickly impressing the staff. During the 2010 season, Aberdeer played in all 13 of Wisconsin's games, recording 20 receptions for 289 yards and 3 touchdowns. In the 2011 season, he had improved in every facet of his game, route running, strength, and speed. He became the Badgers' number two wide receiver behind Nick Toon, leading the team in receiving yards with 933 yards and having eight receiving touchdowns. He finally earned a scholarship in January of 2012. In the 2012 football season, Jared had 837 receiving yards and five touchdowns, finishing the year being named a consensus first-team All-Big Ten player. Going to the 2013 season, Jared was named to a handful of different award watch lists and would not disappoint. Against UMass, he had two receptions for 122 yards and two touchdowns. Against Ohio State, he had 10 receptions for 207 yards against future first round pick Bradley Roby. He finished the year with 1,081 receiving yards and seven touchdowns while also rushing for 119 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. He's named the Burlesworth Trophy winner, which recognizes a student athlete who began his career as a walk-on and finished tied for the Badgers' all-time reception record. Averdaris would be invited to the Senior Bowl, but hurt his hamstring in practice and was pulled from the game. Teammate Jordan Frederick only had positive things to say about Averdaris, telling Fox Sports he does everything perfectly. We just watch him and he works so hard. We want to do exactly what he does, which makes you work harder, which is weird. He doesn't really say anything, but you've still got to try to keep up to him because he's way past your level. Nothing about Jared Averdaris screamed NFL when you looked at him, but he fought for his opportunity just like he did coming out of high school. Averdaris told Bleacher Report, I think I belong because I've been there before, when I've been the person that's been doubted. My work ethic, what I bring to the team more than just on the field, off the field in the community, I make plays when the ball is in the air. He had solid combine numbers and a scouting report going into the draft said Aberdares is limited in physical tools, which will likely cause some teams to dismiss him due to limited upside. However, it's tough to find another prospect in this class who gets more out of his skill set. Aberdares' strength is in route running, which gives him the potential to immediately step onto the field as a role player in the offense. He will probably never develop into an elite weapon, but he has the tools to contribute as a second or third option. The Green Bay Packers will select Jared Aberderis in the fifth round of the 2014 NFL Draft. After being selected by his hometown Packers, Aberderis said, Just being a walk-on at Wisconsin and then being able to have my dream to play in the NFL on the Packers, which was my team growing up, that's who I rooted for, so I'm excited. Going into this rookie year, Aberderis would tear his ACL, then suffered a concussion during training camp the following year. He would be cut by the Packers during final cuts in 2015, but signed to the practice squad a few days later. He would be promoted to the active roster in October and recorded his first career catch against the Detroit Lions. He finished the game with four receptions for 57 yards, but suffered a rib injury that cut his day short. He would return a few weeks later, and in October of 2016, he would once again be put on the injured reserve, before he was waived by the Packers after reaching an injury settlement. In January of 2017, Aberdeer signed with the Detroit Lions, playing in seven games before being waived. The following January, he announced his retirement from the NFL. 
Although he can never get anything going in the NFL, the fact he made it makes his story so insane. Jared Aberderis will always be a Wisconsin Badger legend in my eyes and maybe the greatest Badger wide receiver of all time. But what do you think? Is Jared Aberderis the greatest Badger wide receiver of all time? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.